Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Sellers. Welcome to Psych 300 at UMGC. I'll be your uh, professor this semester. I'm really excited about this class. I teach a lot of sections of research methods and have uh, for quite a few years now. And, it, and I like this class because it seems like it might not be the most exciting class in the world, right? Methods or stats. Um, but I love this class because I think it helps us understand how the field of psychology works and how we actually produce and gain the information that we have from the world. Uh, and it ultimately sets the foundation for all of academic psychology and, and all those specific areas that you love, whether it's social, social psychology or development or cognitive psychology, you know, none of them would, would exist or be what they are without methods and stats. And so uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this class uh, and uh, I hope you are too. So my goal here with this video is just to take you through, introduce you to the basics of the class, the basic structure. Uh, we're not gonna get too into the weeds because you can just go on Leo and look at the syllabus um, and, and pick out any details that you might need. But we're just gonna talk about some of the general structure, how we're gonna communicate um, big things you should be watching out for, uh, that kind of information. So like I said, my name is Dr. Sellers. Um, I got my PhD, oh gosh, in 2015, something like that, 2015, 2016, from Florida Atlantic University uh, in experimental psychology. My main area of expertise is memory, specifically um, memory from an evolutionary perspective, how memory evolved uh, and why memory functions in particular ways based on that evolutionary history. Sort of looking at non-human primates, uh, human children, human adults, uh, and even a lot of that work intersects with um, some non-human species that you might uh, not anticipate have pretty amazing memory systems, but lots of corvids. So that's birds like crows or, or jays uh, have really incredible memory systems that, that also help us understand the evolution of human memory. So that's my sort of passion um, and the specific area of psychology that really gets me excited and interests me. Uh, but like I said, research methods and stats I find to be compelling because no matter what your specific area of interest is, you will and, and should find value in, in methods and stats, uh, either from producing research or from consuming research and becoming a better consumer as well. So um, let's, let's dive into some of the details of the course. Contact. I will communicate with the class pretty much exclusively through the announcements function in Leo. Uh, that's just the easiest place for me to like spam you with updates or information, uh, links, reminders, uh, videos like this, right? The, the best way for me to get that stuff to you is through the announcements function. So make sure you're checking that announcements function uh, pretty consistently for class updates. Now, if I need to contact you as an individual, then I will use your UMGC email and, and reach out to you directly. So that's me contacting you. Uh, if you need to contact me, um, I try to use the, the ask the professor discussion function, like the forum. Um, if you have like general questions or issues about the class. So that could be a content question, like, hey, this, this thing on page 78 of chapter three, like I'm a little confused. Could you, could you explain that? Um, I would like to answer that in the Ask the Professor forum. That way, everyone else has the opportunity to see the answer to that question. Because um, if you have a question about something, it's likely other students have a question about that same thing. And if we are answering all of those content and sort of general issue questions in a common forum, then we're all working together to help inform each other better. Uh, whereas if you reach out to me and you ask that question individually, I might respond to your email and give you the help or the answer or feedback, and then it stops there and we don't actually inform anyone else or help anyone else. So really using this Ask the Professor forum uh, is going to help give a more sort of classroom feel uh, to this online course such that if a student over there has a question, 
um, they ask it, and then you also get to hear the answer. Right? So it, it mimics that, um, that setup a little better. So if you have any content questions, general questions about assignments, like, hey, what's with this rubric? Or could you, could you explain what we should expect for quiz one, whatever? Those, that sort of general stuff, do it and ask the professor. I'll be monitoring that and responding as needed. If you have an individual question for me, like about yourself, about your grade, about a scheduling issue, about um, you know something personal that happens, um, if you're going to need some you know some really substantial flexibility, or you're having some administrative problem, right? Like if if something is is the matter with you, or if you have a question that just pertains to you, so your feedback on an assignment or your grade on an assignment. That does not belong in Ask the Professor, right? Because no one else needs to know those things. Uh, so if you have that individual question, please just email me within Leo directly, and then we'll communicate there. Uh, I, I do try and solve most issues over email because that is the quickest way to, to resolve them, and we don't have to worry about coordinating our schedules to meet, which can be difficult. Um, but uh, if we cannot answer a question over email, then I'm obviously available for virtual meetings as needed. Um, we'll, we'll schedule some sort of Zoom or something like that and um, talk face-to-face -face, um, and help resolve whatever issue you're having. But uh, I, I do try and do it over email because I can answer an email at 11 p.m., right, and get you that answer much more quickly than saying, well, do you, are you available Tuesday morning? Or, oh, well, what about Thursday afternoon? Like, it just too much time passes, right? And then, and we're not communicating fast enough. So I try to answer questions through email because we can do that anytime and do it quickly. If we need to, then we'll schedule a virtual meeting. Okay, um, so a little bit more about this course. Um, this course is designed to give you an introduction to research in the field of psychology. So we're going to talk about the, the bits and pieces and parts that make up research, like variables, um, you know, different techniques or methods or measurements, um, uh, you know, like the recipe for research. Like what are, what are the things you need to make research go, to make research happen? Uh, and we're also going to talk about types of research, experimental research, non-experimental research, surveys, that sort of stuff. So you have sort of a, a nice foundation of what are the kinds of things that can happen in research in psychology. And we're going to talk also about ethics, um, you know, how we conduct research in a way to best respect uh, the subjects and the participants and to do things in a way that is equitable and fair uh, and does not cause harm, uh, but also produces the best possible results and the most useful results. So think of this class as a nice foundation for the research process. This is going to help you move on in research. If you maybe you're going to uh, obtain a graduate degree, uh, you'll, you'll build upon this in more specific ways. Um, and even if you don't move on in psychology or move on to a graduate degree, this, uh, this class will help you understand research better. So as you might engage with research, in your day-to-day -day life or in your career, uh, you'll have a better understanding of what went into that research and how to interpret that research. So this course is structured um, weekly. So we have weekly modules, and then there are assignments and then due dates within each week. Uh, a week runs from Wednesday to Tuesday. So every Wednesday we will start um, uh, a new weekly module, and then it will end that uh, following Tuesday. These modules are sort of wide open for you from the beginning of the class. Um, I understand that, you know, we all have lives, we all have stuff going on, we all have um, responsibilities. And so if you need to work ahead a little bit, then the flexibility is there for you to work ahead. Now, everything still has due dates. Right? The the fact that we have flexibility doesn't mean you can just turn everything in late at the end of the semester. It's not that kind of flexibility. Um, we have weekly due dates and you have discussions and assignments and quizzes that are due each week within each module. However, 
the flexibility is so that if you know, okay, in week six, I have to go out of town or I have something crazy going on with work um, during week six, week six is open right now for you. You can work ahead um, and accomplish some of the stuff for week six or engage with the material so that it lightens that load for you um, in anticipation of maybe not having as much time as you, as you normally would. So the flexibility is meant to allow you to work ahead. The flexibility is not really meant to give you sort of carte blanche to turn things in whenever you want, if that makes sense. So you still have due dates. Um, the major assignments that you're gonna have, uh, every week we will have discussion posts. This is our opportunity to engage with each other, uh, with me, with your classmates about the material. Um, so when the module opens on Wednesday, you will have until Sunday to produce your own personal post in the discussion for that module. Uh, the, the discussion forum for each module will give you some prompts. Typically it's like, okay, choose one of these couple um, topics and create a discussion post about it. Um, there's some information, there's some guidelines there. Uh, but the idea here is that, you know, I really wanna see you thinking about and engaging with the material. Uh, an appropriate discussion is not, you know, oh, I really enjoyed this chapter, that was cool, period, right? Like that's, that's not engaging with the material. You need to have some sort of thoughtful response. Um, you need to be citing um, research or citing material from the textbook. You know, this is an upper level class. We're gonna expect a little bit more from you. Um, you need to be backing up your claims uh, with citations and with appropriate research. Um, please don't uh, directly quote from like the internet. Uh, if you're pulling a quote from the textbook, put it in quotations and tell me where you got it from, like what page you got that quotation from. Um, but don't just like, you know, Google the topic and go, you know, grab some random stuff off the internet. Like, that's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for you to engage with the information in a thoughtful and a professional um, and appropriate manner. So your personal post is due every Sunday. And then you have two peer responses, which are due Tuesday, so the last day of each um, weekly module. So for every given week, you have to make one personal post that is your thoughts about the topic. Um, typically in response to one of the prompts uh, within the discussion forum. So your personal post by Sunday, and then you have to have two peer responses where you're responding to what someone else has said by Tuesday. Uh, and those three things together make up your discussion grade for that module. And so we're gonna have one of those for each module. So stay on top of those. Again, you can work a little bit ahead if you need to, um, but I will be, you know, there are deadlines, there are um, due dates, Sundays and Tuesdays for each of those discussions. And then I will be assigning grades, um, you know, based on appropriateness of the material in your discussion. Uh, you will then have three quizzes throughout the semester. They're, they're sort of scattered about maybe roughly every two weeks or so um, throughout the semester. So three quizzes, then you'll have uh, two mini labs which basically amount to like a shortened version of an APA style research paper. We'll be providing um, more details about that as we get closer. And then at the end of the semester, you have one longer research report, um, which is sort of a long version of an APA style research paper. Uh, I'll be giving you feedback section by section on that um, if you would like it. It's not required um, for you to turn in section by section. But I will be providing feedback if um, if you want that feedback. Again, details to follow on the mechanics and, and how all that works. And then you have a final exam, uh, of course, at the end of the semester covering um, the material. So this course adds up to a thousand points. You can go to the syllabus and look at the exact breakdown of point by point by point where everything comes from. Uh, but it adds up to a thousand points. Uh, anything 900 and over is an A, 800 and over is a B, so on and so forth. Um, you know, pretty straightforward grading structure. So 
Um, I'm excited about this class. I'm excited to help guide you through it. And that's really the way that I, um, I think about these things. I think about me as sort of a guide, uh, an expert guide, helping you work through the material. Um, and then, you know, stepping in and providing feedback and, and comments um, to help really pull everything together. Um, I'm here for you. So please reach out um, with whatever you need or whatever questions you have. Again, ask the professor for general stuff. Um, email me within Leo for individual questions. Check your announcements because that's how I'm going to communicate with the class. Um, and if I need to communicate with you individually, I will email you directly. That's it for me. Thank you very much, everybody. And I'm excited about the semester. Have a good one.